bit of backstory, I was an active duty Marine a year prior to this story happening. Granted, we're trained to take lives and deploy to other countries to fight. Sad to say that I never got the opportunity to deploy, but if I wasn't trained as a Marine, I honestly think I wouldn't be here telling this story. Now, on to the story. This story took place last year on a cool summer night here in Arizona. I just got off from work and took a co-worker home from a late night dinner after the shift. I passed by a gas station after I dropped her off. I was working two jobs at the time, so it was already late, around 2 a.m. I knew an energy drink would help me wake up tomorrow morning for my next job. So I was slowly pulling into this empty gas station. I noticed no other cars anywhere. That's when something caught my eye as I was pulling up in front of the entrance. There was a shadowy figure that suddenly pulled up along one of the walls of the gas station and kept creeping along the walls getting closer as I pulled up. There was some sort of shadowy figure that suddenly pulled up along one of the walls of the gas station. It crept along the walls getting closer as I pulled up and turned off my car. But at the time, I couldn't care less because I was tired and I figured he was just a drunk and about to ask for change or something like that. I saw the outline of his face as he pulled away from the shadows. He opened his mouth to say something, but before he could say anything, I cut him off and said, Hey, uh, I'll, I'll be right back, sir. He just kind of stood there and stared at me as I walked into the gas station. I wasn't even thinking about him because I was tired and just wanted to go home. I swooped up my favorite energy drink and walked up to the cashier. I paid for my drink in a matter of a minute as the cashier wasn't really in any mood to make any small talk. I pushed the entrance door open and I noticed that the man was no longer there. I was looking around for the man as I approached my car to only see him coming from the dark corner again. But something seemed off about him this time. I didn't care to stick around to see what was off about him and went to open my car door. Then I heard rapid footsteps approach from behind me. I turned around as fast as possible to make eye contact with him. He was just staring at me less than an arm's reach away. Every option suddenly ran through my head, screaming at me to just get in the damn car and slam the door. But he was already too close for me to try anything without him trying to do something. So I wanted to try and create a peaceful conversation as a desperate attempt to try to get this creep away from me. I said, Oh, hey, it's, it's you again. Is there something I can do for you? His whisper had a scratchy tone to it as he said, Gotta need change. I was actually thrilled. Uh, I was happy because I could just give this creep some money as a peaceful resolution. I said, sure do. Hold on, I'll dig it out for you. By the time I grabbed a fistful of change as I leaned into my car, I heard the passenger door behind me open and then I felt a handful of my hair get pulled into my driver's seat. My hair got yanked back really hard as he whispered, You fucking scream or yell and I'll fucking kill you. Then I felt a knife slowly glide over my throat. He then whispered, Understand. I carefully nodded up and down. He then replied, now, we're going to New Mexico. Don't do anything stupid or I'll cover your car's interior with your blood. At the time, I was thinking, fuck, th this can't be fucking real. So I had to think and relax. That's one thing my commanding officer said in the Corps. The key to victory is a clear conscience and a cool head. So I asked him, okay, how are we doing this? Are you just going to give me directions? I then felt his grip on my hair loosen. Good, smart kid. I hate when they beg me to let them go. Now use your GPS or whatever. His knife was still gently pressed up against 70% or so of my throat. So I told him I was slowly going to reach into my glove department for my GPS. Then I asked him where in New Mexico we were going. He laughed and told me to just shut up and drive. Why was he laughing now? This guy was a complete psycho. I was there driving and praying in my head for a chance to open where I would be able to fight back. I could tell that his knife was starting to get loose around my neck for every five minutes or so that I drove. The knife at the start of this drive was at about 70%, but now it was at around 
I had to make a right at the intersection. Finally, I saw an opportunity. I saw this Ford Ranger pickup truck coming down the road I was supposed to join on. In my head, I asked myself, do you really want to die a coward? Then, as I saw the Ford Ranger approach at a rapid rate, I pressed all the way down on the gas pedal. Then, boom. All I remember from all the commotion is the guy leaning back as I slid my hand under his wrist of the hand that was carrying the knife and pinned it against the steering wheel of my car. I can hear the horn blaring, attracting more attention. He let go of the knife and ran out of the car as the intersection made itself known to me again as my surroundings were no longer blurry. I wanted to run after him, but the driver of the Ford Ranger grabbed me and said, Hey, what the hell happened? Do you have insurance? I was trying to push through the guy to catch that fucking coward, but the only words that escaped my mouth were, Don't let him get away! That's all I was yelling as I saw the dark silhouette of the man disappearing into the darkness. I told the police everything when they arrived. I did everything you're supposed to, but nothing really ever came of it. And they didn't see anyone matching my description of the man. I now carry my gun on me and a few knives. So I will never be the victim of something like this again.